Hey everyone, Becca here with another Zoom Notes tutorial. This one is going to be sort of a, a follow-up part two to the, the tables tutorial that I did uh, with some extra little tricks in there that I've been using on my monthly spreads. Uh, so after I had posted my last table video, uh, a couple of people notified me and told me, let's open up the table tool here, that you are not limited to this little slider bar here that only goes up to 12, um, but you can actually tap in this box and type whatever number you would like. Uh, I don't know what the actual maximum is, but it works great for the 31 day um, habit tracker. So after figuring that out, I decided I'd go ahead and play around with using it to set up my habit tracker. Uh, so before I had one that I had drawn out in Procreate and I was copying and pasting it over here and, and uh, putting it in as a PNG image. And that was working out great, um, but I definitely noticed any time I copy and paste things out of Procreate, no matter what quality I have the canvas set at. Um, when I paste it into GoodNotes or Zoom Notes or any app like that, it always loses just a little bit of quality and gets a little bit uh, fuzzier. So if you can see with the table here um, that I drew in Zoom Notes, all the lines come out perfectly crisp and sharp. And since I really like that, I decided it was worth the effort to get rid of all the ones I had brought over from Procreate and recreate them using the table tool. Um, just because I like how much sharper the lines come out using the, the, the native tool. Zoom back out here. Um, so I'm going to go over, you know, how I was setting that up and a couple other little tricks that I use when I'm setting up my monthly spreads. Um, so let me go over here to January, and this and this is the uh, test planner. So nothing is set up except that one February one. Um, so one of the things I have been doing, let me open my symbol tool guy up here. Uh, I created some symbols that I am using for my monthly spreads. Um, so you can see I already have my habit trackers here set up with different numbers of days. I have this little hexagon that I've been using uh, for my mission board layout. Uh, I use this little weekday header bar that I really like. Um, I have a lot of uh, sticker packs that I like to use with some fancy headers so I can easily bring this up here and uh, line. it's perfectly lined up uh, from side to side, I can make it taller, but if it's perfectly lined up side to side, so I can cover up that header if I want to change, you know, the color layout or if I want to use any of those fancy header scripts that I get. Um, and then I can change this color background to be whatever color scheme I'm going with. So that's been really handy to have. And then the other one that I have set up right now is uh, this little invisible one, but it's my sidebar. Uh, let me go over here to my layers, unlock my layout, which is my base layer that I keep at the bottom. And I can put this down and it's sized to perfectly cover up everything over here on the left so I don't have any of the dot grid showing behind uh, my habit tracker. So I can put that down. And then I would go back into my layout and uh, I'll go ahead and switch to my habit tracker here and lock this one. And actually to start out, I keep this one invisible because I like to use the dots to line up uh, my habit tracker. So I would go into my table tool here and I track uh, six habits. So I need seven columns and I need 31 days for January. Uh, the line thickness, I started at one. Uh, my line thickness will change as I'm resizing it. Uh, I have the setting turned on for line scaling. I like it to be on because if I have text box or anything like that and I want to resize everything in a, in a uh, using the select tool, uh, if you don't have the line scaling turned on, your text box will shrink, but your font will stay the same size. So I like the line scaling on, uh, but it will alter your line thickness as you are resizing your table. So, you know, depending on what setting you have. Um, and then for the line color, I think it's already set correctly, but I like to go ahead and tap on that. And I use the little uh, dropper here at the top and I like to just pick up, you know, whatever else is on the page so it kind of matches. So I would just pick up that gray color here, which is what I'm currently set to. Um, and then I don't need, I would make sure my fill is turned off. I don't like to have a fill. And then that would look good. So we can zoom back out here. Um, and I just draw a quick table. And then what I like to do is line it up down here with this bottom dot. Actually, I need to bring it up here. Um, so let's start it about here. I line it up on the left. I drag it over to the dot on the right. And then I drag it down to the dots on the bottom. So 
that's just how I like to uh, to line mine up. And then once I have that where I like it, I can go back into my my layers here and turn on uh, the bottom uh, layer that has my white square so you can't see the dots anymore. Okay, and then that looks pretty good. And the next thing I would do is, well, so then I'll show you if I, if I go back into my table and I select this table and I go in here, you'll see my line thickness changed a little bit because I actually made the table bigger, so it made it a little thicker. Um, and then I can just put it to one and hit enter and uh, keep everything at one. So the next thing I would do is then add in my numbers. So if you tap off that, if you tap on your text tool, I think I have found um, 15 to be about right for the size of these squares uh, for my uh, berry bubble font that I got from the Boho Berry Digital Shop. And I like to do a dark gray. And the other thing you'll want to do, if your box mode is turned off, you'll notice you don't really have a lot of text options. So you want to turn on the box mode. And in these little tiny boxes, I don't really see a difference in, uh, in vertical spacing. But I like to change my horizontal spacing to this center one here. And then you just want to make sure your border is turned off so you don't get a border around your text box. And that should be good. So then you can just tap here in this first box. Tap a 1, and you'll see it comes out nice and centered. And then you can just tap off with your pencil. Tap on the next box. Type your 2. Tap off. Tap on the next box. Type 3 and so forth. And I will cut this part out so you don't have to watch me enter in all these numbers. Okay, so now we have all of our dates entered there on the left. Uh, the, first, the other thing I mentioned on the table is that even though it kind of looks like a nice um, Excel spreadsheet, it's actually independent objects. So if you were to, you know, lasso it there and move it around, you will only pick up certain things. You will not get all of your numbers. So if you want to make sure they stay together, you will want to pick up everything on here. I always tap and hold with my finger and tap group here. Um, a lot of your options are also available under your selection tool. So if I had this object selected, you know, a lot of the things you get from the, the long press are here too that you go to other for. Um, so you could have group and ungroup and move and all that. So a lot of times if I'm working on stuff on the right side of my page, I leave this selection bar open over here because it gives me a lot of those quick options. So now that we have everything grouped here, we can do the top for our categories. So now I would need just the one column and six rows for my different habits. Everything else should still be set correctly. And I would just draw a short little box about so. Same concept here, go back into your text tool. This time, open up the text tool. This time I don't necessarily want it centered, I want it to be on the left. Um, you can try setting it to the middle, but I, I don't think it really matters too much. And when I'm typing on these, I like to put in a blank space so it's not right up against the line. And then you can type in your habit. Tap off, tap on. Do a space, type in your next habit, add one more, and so forth until you have all of your habits in. So from here, if you go into your selection tool settings, which would be the little cogwheel here in the upper left, um, I like to go down to the category called selection and turn on selection guidelines. I rarely use them, but I like to have them on when I rotate objects. So I would pick up everything here. And now with that selection guidelines turned on, it will snap, um, you'll see, to the, the 90 degree turn there. Otherwise, it's very, very difficult for me to get it to be exactly 90 degrees. Uh, so after I have it rotated, I'll just go back into my selection tool, go into the settings, and turn selection guidelines back off so that I can uh, drag this stuff around. And then I would just line it up over here on that side and then just kind of shrink it here until I got it uh, lined up the way that I like it. And obviously, as you can see, I made my table way too big. 
I'm just bring it down like that. And then I would go back into my table settings and you can see my line thickness changed again from three scaling it. So I would just change it back to one and it should all match. And then now we have that lined up. And again, you could select everything up here, tap and hold, go to group. So now all that stuff is grouped together as well. Um, and then after that, I would group everything together and make a symbol out of it. So I go here and tap group. Uh, verify that it all is grouped together. Yes. And then from here, you can just select it. You could go into your selection tool here, go down here and tap uh, create new symbol. Or if you were um, in your symbols, you could also Oops, not text. You could also um, tap the little plus sign here and add symbol. So there's multiple ways to get it added in here. I don't need all these in here though. Um, you could also tap and hold, go to other. It's in here somewhere, create new symbol. So however you like to use it, there's a lot of ways to get to the same place in Zoom Nodes. Okay, so the next trick is setting it up for the rest of your months. This will get you uh, half, about half of your months, um, but then you have the other ones that only have you know 30 or 28 or 29 days, depending on the year. Um, if you are fine with leaving it like this and just not filling out the bottom of those, uh, of that tracker for the month, if you only have 28 days and you just wanna leave 29, 30, and 31 blank, then you're done and you can put this on every page. Um, I like to resize mine to be uh, the exact number of days for each month. And I'll show you the quick trick that I use to do that. So I would start by selecting everything, go to other, go to ungroup, and then also, oops, only one tap, uh, select the bottom table here, select other and ungroup. So now if I drag this, it should be independent again, which it is. Okay, so the first thing you would do is go to your table tool, tap on your table, tap on your table and then change it to let's do let's say I'm setting it up for February so let's set it to 28 hit enter close that so now I have my 28 boxes but of course my numbers are all screwed up and at this point if you wanted to pick up the number 31 down here you could press and hold with your finger and pick it up and hit delete um, as I mentioned, I think in one of my original videos, if I do that with my finger, it actually does delete it, but it doesn't show anything. So if I switch to one of my other tools and then I tap on the page, it will take effect. Um, so it does work, but for some reason it doesn't ever show immediately. Whereas when I use the selection tool and I hit delete, it's immediate. Uh, but right now, if I were to use the selection tool and try to pick this up, you'll see I'm going to... Am I the only one that's being driven crazy by the new Apple Pencil? I absolutely love it and my new iPad, and I, I love the way that it is magnetic and it charges, but the double tapping and changing to eraser is just driving me bonkers. And I'm sure it's because I'm not used to it yet, but I am constantly in the middle of doing something and I bump it with my hand and I flip over to the eraser and I don't realize it and it's driving me nuts. Um, anyway, hopefully I get used to it. Um, so if I were to pick up this and try to move it around, you'll see I get more than the number 30. Um, so I would tap on my selection tool, go into my settings, and for instances like this, I will change my select tool mode from overlap to enclose. I really like it to be on overlap. It's very similar to what I'm used to when I was using GoodNotes um, to just lasso something really quick and move it around. But if you have objects on top of each other on the same layer, changing it to enclose will help you uh, narrow down exactly what you pick up. So now if I just highlight around the 30 and the only thing that's fully enclosed in my selection tool is a 30. I can hit delete and get rid of it. And then I'm actually going to delete the 29 and the 28. Go up here to the top and I'm going to delete the one. So at this point I would tap on my text tool, tap in my first box and make sure I have my, um, setting back to horizontal, uh, centered horizontally, and then I would type my one, and then tap off, and then scroll back down here to the bottom, 
tap on the last one down here and I would type my 28 and tap off. And now I'm still on the uh, enclose, so when I do the selection, it will not pick up anything except the numbers. So I would fully enclose all of my numbers here. Tap on my selection tool again. Scroll down here to the bottom. You would want to make sure that your um, space evenly is toggled on. And then I want to keep everything aligned vertically again. So I would hit center here. And now you can see everything is centered and been evenly distributed, which puts them back in their appropriate boxes. So from here, I would just select everything again, group it together, and make another symbol out of it. So now I have symbols for, I currently have symbols for 31 and 30 and 28 days. And then eventually, if I'm still using this exact same planner or whatever I'm doing when we have a leap year, I'd have to make modifications for that one. Um, so the next thing is filling in your habit tracker. So I thought I would just show you kind of quickly how the fill tool works and some little tricks to how you want it to look, uh, how you want to use the fill tool, depending on how you want it to look. So let's pick a nice uh, vibrant color here. So I'll pick this purple. So I'm on my fill tool, uh, which is my little uh, paint bucket looking thing over here. I guess I can show you this one right here is your fill tool. So for starters, let's look at how, how your zoom and how your layers impact the way the fill tool works. So if I am zoomed out to my kind of maximum distance of what my page would look like, and I use the fill tool, and you'll see over here in my layers, I am on the habit tracker layer. So I am on the same layer that the habit tracker is on. And I will fill out this row here. And then I will change my layer to coloring, which I have below my habit tracker. And I will fill out this row below it. And then I will change my layer to my writing one, which I have above my habit tracker. And I will fill it out. So now if you zoom in and look, you can see Number five here has um, nothing showing up on my gray lines because it is underneath my habit tracker. Um, there is kind of some spill over there into the box where my number five is. And if you look at um, number three and number one, so number three was the same layer as my habit tracker and number one is the layer above my habit tracker. You can see, you know, the boxes are kind of kind of covering the gray lines in some places. There's definitely a lot of overlap. Um, if that, if you don't care, if you don't, if you're not bothered by that, then, you know, it's very easy to fill it out at a, at a distance and just tap in each box, or you can do it on a layer under if you want to make sure it keeps your gray lines. Um, I'll scroll down here now. So if you fill out your habit tracker at a zoom, so I am on the layer above my habit tracker. I could fill in these boxes and you'll see I'm not getting that overlap anymore. There's a much better fill there. Um, and if I change it to my layer with the habit tracker and I fill out these boxes, it still has a nice good fill with no overlap. And, or I can change it to my layer under my habit tracker and fill it out. And there's no bleed through. Um, so these three end up looking pretty much the same. So if you like to zoom in and tap on them and fill it out, then it really isn't going to matter which layer you're on. If you like to fill it out at a distance, uh, you'll just want to be a little mindful of the way the fill tool is going to work. It's going to have a little bit of bleed through and it's definitely going to cover your lines if you are not on the layer below, but you can see even on the layer below, it's got some, got some bleed through. Um, so I kind of personally like to just zoom in a little bit and fill them in um, on the either the current layer or a layer below. Um, but you can just see the way that the uh, the fill tool works at the different zoom. Um, so that's pretty much it there. If I go back out of here into my... Nope, my cover's not loaded right. Uh, if I go back here into my 2019 planner, you can see how I have been using that in my layouts. This is my spread for January. Um, I went ahead and added it exactly the same way I did in the other video. Uh, I just used the fill tool to fill around it to the, the dark blue. Um, so that's pretty much it. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful. Um, 
I think the, the biggest limitation of the table tool right now is that uh, everything has to be the same size. So if you were trying to do a planner from scratch or if you wanted to recreate, you know, your, your monthly page here, go back into my test planner. Um, you could use the same concept for the, like I did for the habit tracker. You could make your table for your days here, and then you can make one really skinny row at the top or one really fat row at the top for your headers if you want to do that. Um, but again, it would still have to be into, um, two separate tables. Um, you can also just pull it over from another app. Uh, so if I was in here in my, this is the uh, pages app that comes with your, I think it comes for free with your iPad now. I can't remember. Um, so I could just go in here and make a table. Um, and I would just select this row. I don't know if there's a way to make it not show up gray. Um, from the get-go, um, I like to do, actually we want to do no fill. Um, is that an option? Oh, there's a no fill. So let's go ahead and select. Oh, nope, didn't want to make it bigger. Um, go ahead and select all of these. Go to the settings up here. Change them to no fill. And then I would do... Maybe that one would be thin. And then your next, next five here would be thicker boxes. Sort of like a calendar. Um, you could select, oh, I keep dragging that one. Um, you could select all of these, go in here to your border style. You could turn on a thick border for all of them if you wanted to have that. Um, so anyway, so you could kind of get that laid out the way you would like a monthly spread to look. Um, if you were in Zoom Notes here, I would just pick up pages and you can just drag it over. You would want your top row in the next five press and hold bring it over um so that might be an easier way to bring in a table you can look at it on one of the blank tabs here it'd be a little easier to see um and it brings it over with a little little header there so you can just crop that off um so that's another way one, two, three, four, five, seven. Yeah, that one had seven columns. Um, so that's another way you could bring one over. Uh, you could then also use the fill tool with this table. Get a dark color here. Um, so, you know, that's something you could easily manipulate too. Um, I still think when you draw it natively in Zoom Notes, it comes out a lot crisper. Uh, you can see that's definitely getting some blur in there. Uh, but it's a good way to get that... Uh, Different, if you need different sizes for your table, um, I think that'd be a lot easier than having to match up a whole bunch of tables. Um, so anyway, that's another option. So I hope this video was helpful and thank you very much for watching.